Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. I'm sorry I couldn't make it to the Freddie Kitchen press conference today. Here's the main question I would have asked had I been there. Freddie, when you challenge a referee's call, are you just like us fans who hope the call will go our way? Or is somebody telling you that, for sure, the referees completely made the wrong call? From the guys in the broadcast booth to the guys watching at a sports bar somewhere or even in their man caves with their buddies, unless Clark Kent is telling you to throw that red flag, you're making a total mockery of yourself and the Cleveland Browns. In case you didn't watch the CBS replay, you might want to know that Tony Romo, who's now the best in the business, gave up on you about midway in the third quarter, and that was before you even gave him more chances to mess things up. Here's some friendly advice from a guy who likes you. If you do have a guy in the booth who's telling you when to challenge a call, fire him immediately and hire me. Unbelievable. 216-575-0403 from the Worldwide... From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Monday night, it's a brand new week. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into our 24th consecutive season and ex seen exclusively here on Cleveland.com. Doug Lane Maurice was supposed to be here. We're going to have to reschedule, but we've got lots to talk about. I haven't done this in a long time. I haven't begged for phone calls. I'm going to fill it, beg for phone calls. It's open lines, and I know you're out there and you want to talk, so let's talk. Just you and me among friends. Find out what you're thinking. We got good news, Ohio State. We got bad news, the Cleveland Browns, and I don't even know where to begin, so maybe you can help me out. Again, lines are open at the top of the show, and uh, we'd love to have you join in, uh, especially people who uh, would be first-time callers. Now is the time to do that. Uh, if you can't think of something to say on uh, a night like this after that weekend, I, I don't know what to tell you. It uh, could be worse. We could be uh, Washington National fans, for goodness sakes. 216-575-0403. You see the number at the bottom of the screen. You can email me during the show at reallesslevine at gmail.com. We'll do How Come Quickies a little bit later. And uh, let's start off with some uh, good news, and that is Ohio State. Uh, the segment of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by the Ohio Lottery. All right, let's take a look at uh, the Big East and the uh, the uh, B uh, Big Ten East and the Big Ten West. See what's going on after Ohio State's uh, very impressive win over Wisconsin over the weekend. A game. It was an interesting game. I uh, picked it up uh, about midway in the second quarter, and Ohio State was up by ten and I uh, by three at that time, and I was just hoping they could get a, a score in the, uh, the rest of the half and get it into. I knew the the weather was horrible. And so I was just hoping they could make it 10 to nothing at halftime, which they did. And then they went out and blew the game out in the second half. So congratulations to, uh, to them. So here you go. It's the Big Ten East standings right now. Penn State and Ohio State tied 5-0, 8-0 overall. Michigan uh, with their win uh, over Notre Dame, but doesn't help them in the conference. They're 3-2. Indiana also at 3-2. Michigan State falls, falls to 2-3. And, and Maryland 1-4 uh, and, and Rutgers 0-5. And, and of course, uh, We'll talk about Ohio State's schedule, but it's pretty easy the next week. I don't know if they'll have more trouble with the bye or with Rutgers, but we'll find out about that in the next uh, couple of uh, couple of weeks. 216-575-0403 is the number. Now let's take a look at the West, Minnesota. Look at those guys, 5-0, 6-0 overall. And uh, they, of course, don't have to, to play the big boys, but they will have to play some people to get where they need to get. And that would be into the championship game of the Big Ten at Lucas Oil Stadium in, uh, in Indianapolis. Iowa is next at 3-2. and two. Wisconsin falls to 3-2 and two after that, uh, well, the loss to uh, Illinois and then, of course, Ohio State. Uh, Illinois at 2-3 and three now under Lovey Smith. Nebraska 2-3 and three, and Purdue 1-4. And, and Northwestern, who, uh, play, who had uh, seemingly had a turnaround over the last couple of years, now falter to 0-5, and, and they are 1-6 in the uh, overall standing. So that's the way it looks. And and um, we'll get your thoughts on that. Ohio, uh, the impressive thing about Ohio State, and it, well, everything is impressive. I, I've seen, over the years, you've seen good Ohio State offenses, good Ohio State defenses, but I'm not sure you saw, you've seen in the last 
I'm just going to throw a number out, how about 25 years? I don't think it's been 25 years since Ohio State has had an equally dominant defense and an equally, do an equally dominant offense, which is what they have right now. And uh, when you consider that Ohio State could have two, maybe three people who will be in the top ten in the voting in the Heisman Trophy uh, Award, um, it's very possible. I, I'm, I'm just saying that because it sounds right, but I'm sure there's never been three players from one team in the top ten in the Heisman voters. But it, uh, Chase Young could be one, and of course uh, Fields and uh, and uh, the the and the running back uh, JJ. Yeah, Dobbins, J.K. Dobbins, of course, uh, who has really come on strong in the last couple of weeks. So uh, could be all three getting in the top ten, which would negate the vote for one of the favorites, but that's just the way it goes. Uh, Doug had a, a column today or a, an article today about where he thought people uh, around the country were going to go in the bowl situations. And uh, when you think about it, it's very possible you've got an interesting setup uh, with the LSU and, and Ohio State, that everybody with the eyes on the quarterback. So we'll uh, we'll wait until Joe Burrow, of course, uh, down with uh, with LSU and uh, uh, Justin Fields with Ohio State. A lot of interesting matchups potentially coming up, and uh, Ohio State doesn't want to get sidetracked here, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call if you'd like to get in. You can do that. It won't be so easy to get in a little later, so if you want to get in, now is the time to do that. Did you know that that there's over $6.25 million uh, in uh, paid out in the Ohio Lottery pick games every week? With that amount of winning, stop by your local retailers. Try your luck with the pick three, pick four, and pick five. You can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com and uh, New content is posted each and every day. We'll put your names on it. We'll put your pictures on it if you send that along. And uh, you'll comment on whatever's going on, uh, on and lots to talk about today. We have plenty of choices for the question of the week, uh, question of the day on Facebook. We could have gone the, could have run the gamut between Ohio State and uh, what the Cleveland Browns are doing. We're going to take a break. We'll come on back. Les Levine with you. More sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Presque Isle Townsend Casino now has sports betting. Use one of the 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet. Then watch your favorite games on our new HD televisions or visit our new sportsbook area only at Presque Isle Townsend Casino. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Everything's always on the table when you continue to do the same things over and over. Um, so I would leave it at that, probably, right now. Uh, everything gets evaluated whenever uh, the same problem keeps happening to the same people. But again, we've got, it's different people at different times. It's not just them. I understand what you said about a couple of those guys. Uh, they're gonna work to fix their problems. Everybody needs to work to fix their problems and do their job. Uh, but ultimately, if we feel like a change is needed, uh, either to uh, 
increase our chances of being successful in every play, which in return would increase our chances of being successful at the end of the day, uh, then we will do it and won't hesitate in doing that. The thing, you, you have no chance in some of the penalties that we've had is created long down in distances, all right? Then you have no chance to be successful with that drive. And if you eliminate some of those drives, you don't have so many drives to do anything with. And that's where we're at right now. Uh, offensively, we're doing some good things, but we're killing ourselves with turnovers and penalties. And that's all it is. Well, you, you see the progression of Freddie Kitchens going for the, the good old boy from Alabama to whatever's going through his mind right now. And he's got a lot of good things going through his mind because I, I don't think he knows how to correct what's there. And I don't think he has anybody in place that will help him out at this point. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that John Dorsey isn't doing him any favors right now. Sort of hanging in there with him. He, he, can't, he can't criticize uh, Freddie because that was his ultimate uh, choice. Uh, obviously, that was his choice, the, the most important choice, along with Baker Mayfield. And uh, now both are struggling, although I, I, I might be in the minority. I didn't think Baker played that poorly uh, yesterday. And to think that they would call, with, with a torrential rainstorm going, that Freddie Kitchens would call a shovel pass in a situation like that, unless I'm missing it, was, there, was that something other than a shovel pass? Unbelievable. Just, uh, and I've never seen in my life, and I've seen four billion football games at all levels, I've never seen three turnovers on three consecutive plays. And the national media not happy about it, not very impressed with Freddie Kitchens. And in fact, right now, I, we've searched long and hard, but we haven't seen any who have come down on his side. Dan Arlovsky, former quarterback in the NFL, is now with ESPN. He says the Brown situation totally uh, reeks of an un unprepared uh, football team, unprepared coaching. Well, that's pretty rough right there. It continues on. There's much more. Pat McAfee, also of ESPN, says they're like the Titanic. Everybody thought they were unsinkable. They've uh, crashed into every iceberg out there and could potentially find uh, that they're going to let uh, Freddie Kitchens play the music all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. That's a bad decision. The dog pound. Wow. That's, that's pretty rough. Until we get to this one. Rex Ryan, former NFL coach. Rob, his brother, he used to be a defensive coordinator here. Any coach in the league would kill for this talent. You might, it might be the most talented team in the NFL. And uh, so who's, who's, going to die, who's going to go down? I promise you, he's going to go down. And if they're not going to fire the players, they're going to fire the coach. That's Rex Ryan. Then we get to, uh, we continue on and we get Shannon Sharp. And all Shannon says is, is Freddie Kitchens trying to, to, uh, to get fired? The punt unit is on the field. It's fourth and 11. Whistle for a false start, and now he uh, <laughs> comes back, uh, sends the offense back out on the field, and uh, there you go. Right there, the turnover on downs. What, well, you know what that means. What was that, Freddie? Freddie Kitchen, is he trying to get fired? This is unbelievable. I, there's no Freddie Kitchen. It's pretty easy. There's no Freddie Kitchen defender out there. How do you defend this? Let's find out uh, what they're thinking down in Florida. We'll say hi to Rich. Rich is in uh, Naples, Florida. Rich, good evening. Hey, Ross, how are you doing? I'm doing uh, well. Long time listener, first time caller. Good to have you with us. Hey, I would have, you know, this is Freddie Kitchens. I, I have to admit that when he hired, got hired, I kind of liked it because of the success they had in the offense. But, you know, the first series of the game with the run coming down, no runs at all. I think it was three passes for three and out. And then those challenges especially the second one on the pick play. Uh, anybody who plays any football of any sort, you know, and especially with the NFL not reversing any of those calls, that call had no chance of half of being overturned. Rich, I think, that's then, the, I think that's the key, the fact that the NFL, ref, the NFL is not, it's sort of like their last stand. They're not, they're not making that call, they're, the non-call. Sure. They're just not going to do it. And I, I don't think I blame them. It's their own form of protest. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I agree with that. And then, you know, of course, the one you just talked about, that fourth and 11 and taking a penalty and trying to come up with some uh, concoction. Or yeah, that, I mean, know, the game was, the game right. was so over at that time. It, it was almost embarrassing watching it. Yeah. And it's, I'm, I'm a diehard, I live in Florida, but I'm a diehard Cleveland. And I actually, I would have got rid of him after that Seattle game where he tried to justify, uh, you know, the hurry up and score two touchdowns against a, a player like Russell Wilson because you knew when, we, when 
bad lap and we threw that except you need Don Rob, Russell Wilson was marching that team down the field. I, I, just knew I, it. I, I and, think uh, at halftime no that, excuse for that. I, uh, Rich, I think when Freddie said that that he was trying to score twice before halftime, going up against uh, uh, against uh, Seattle, um, I think you just fire him at halftime. Yeah, I, oh, I, I totally agree with you. Because there's under no you know, it'd be one thing if you're playing the Miami Dolphins or some other uh, team. Uh, but when you're going against a, you know, a guy who's going to be a future Hall of Fame quarterback and you're going to leave him a minute, minute and a half on the clock, and you just know darn well he was going to move that team. And you got to go in there with the listen, we're going to be up by, at worst we're going to kick a field goal, we'll be up by 11. Well, half. what you want to do yeah. is score at, at, as the clock runs down. You, you don't yeah, want to give the ball back to Seattle. Yeah, but I, think, I think the second snap, he snapped over 20, you know, 20 seconds on the, on the clock. Now, that might have been a Baker, you know, might have had something to do with that also. But Maybe. the coach has got to be telling these guys, listen, this is what we're doing. You know, let that clock run down. You know, as much time up as possible. And the worst comes to worst, we kick three, and we go into halftime up by 11. What, name one coach that ever thinks that they're thinking of two scores in the last never, two minutes. Never. I mean, you I may get it. To, you know, a, a very good Seattle team. You yeah. Know, and well, a great quarterback. He but said, uh, Freddie said Ryan's something talk, about Dallas. I'm tired of hearing him every game saying, you know, uh, I don't coach penalties, uh, blah, blah, blah. That penalty thing, if these guys are jumping off sides, you got to take them out of the game. Yeah. I don't well, care what happens. If it's yeah. repetitious, you know, the same penalties every stinking game. Yeah, the other thing is. Be done. And you can't, you know, uh, you can't just come up in front of the press every week and say, listen, you know, we're going to work hard and we're going to try to correct these things. You either do it or you don't do it. Well, let me tell you yeah. one other thing about it. And he did it again today where he said, that's on me. They were talking about something yeah. going on. Yeah. The more you say, that's on me or it's my fault, and you're, you're seven games into the season already, and he's already, you know, on five different occasions yeah. on, the post, uh, on the postmortem. He said it's on me. Well, you know what? It's going to be on him, and it's going to be on him sooner than he ever believed. And, and it should be because they got, I'm not sure, they are not a tough schedule, but with a, with a decent coach, I think we're probably going to squeeze the one, one or two out in this, in this stretch. Right. And, uh, you know, the next time they hire a coach, I, I think better hire somebody with experience that's they have, you know, has been in the playoffs, maybe Super Bowl, because they can't afford, a, you know, another you know, chance on a guy who's an offense, you know, running backs coach or, yeah. or some, uh, you know. Well, they're going to get a quarterback who's never played in an NFL game coming up uh, here on uh, Sunday uh, because of the injury to the Denver quarterback. And so if they can't beat that team, uh, you, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> he does, and it's a nice one. All right, we got to go. Hey, Rich, Thank you very much. thanks for joining us. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. It's open line, so I don't think we've done it since we've been out here at our new studio. But I can tell you about Northeast Factory Direct, east, west, and south, three great locations. I've been talking about them for several months now. West 140th Street, that's in Cleveland, uh, Lakeland Boulevard, the B&B Appliance Store, as well as Freeway Drive, that's in Macedonia. And of course, shop first at northeastfactory.com for everything you need. There's no gimmicks, there's no deceiving uh, blowout sales, just three huge bare-bone warehouses. Alex spends about one-tenth what uh, the big box stores uh, pay, and he passes that savings on to you. His 20th year in business, which started in a in a garage in Lakewood with one uh, with one piece of furniture. Unbelievable, one of the great success stories in all of, uh, well, anywhere. Uh, one of the great business success stories. It's Northeast Factory Direct with those three great locations, east, west, and south. We'll come back uh, in a moment. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. They've got the racing which uh, goes uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with the post time at 6 p.m. And then uh, it's 6.40 on Saturday and uh, Sunday. And it's open early every day for simulcast action, the great harness racing uh, uh, all over the, the world, actually, for simulcast action. And the weekly Sunday brunch features uh, Belmont Stakes. Uh, and, of course, the top prize, $500 in uh, cash each and every week. Free admission, free parking every day at Northfield Park. We'll come back in a moment. More sports and less Levine seen exclusively on Cleveland.com. No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. There was moisture in the basement. It ruined the carpeting. The smell was terrible. We didn't feel safe in our own basement, and that's when we called Nature Stone. 
and with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. Get NatureStone installed by the end of October and save up to half off. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor, wow, it's NatureStone. Oh gosh, <laughs> playing Ohio Lottery Pick 3, I see. <laughs> uh, what are you gonna do? Uh... A box bed, a split pairs, or a wheel? Uh. Well, old Picky Ricky here's a straight shooter. <laughs> okay. It razzes my berries when newbies think betting's hard. Straight bets are easy peasy. Just match three numbers in order and win the old fashioned way. This, on the other hand, is not so simple. Oh, God. Oh, jeez, jeez, so weak. <laughs> Play the Ohio Lottery Pick Three today. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Well, here you go. Birthdays for today, the 28th of October. Lenny Wilkins, former coach of the Cavaliers. Lesser of two evils, born in this date in 1947. Mark Carrier, Steve Atwater, Terrell Davis, and Jared Jack, former Cavalier, all born on this date. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. It's open lines. We haven't done that in a long, long time. And uh, one line is open if you'd like to get in. 216-575-0403. Uh, you can email us during the show at uh, the real Les Levine at gmail.com. All right, uh, let's take a look. Uh, this segment brought to you by Tri-C, but it's also brought to us by our friends at Nature Stone. Wow, it's Nature Stone. Wow, it's Mike from Nature Stone. Hello, Mike. Hello, Les. How are you doing? I'm very... Do you walk down the street or go to dinner and people go, wow, it's Nature Stone? <laughs> it happened to me once this weekend. I think that was the only time, though. Oh, Okay. <laughs> All right, it's you, it's you and me tonight. What uh, what are you thinking? Uh, the Browns, of course, Ohio State, and the World Series, which is kind of disappointing right now. All the there hasn't been an exciting game yet, and kind of I was looking forward to that. But uh, so you start. Where do you want to begin? Well, they, uh, we'll start with the World Series because I, I think all the excitement seems to be in the stands with with the, <laughs> the, 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 the woman and whatever else. Don't, those two, those night. poor two ladies will never be allowed in a major league park, and I think that's blatantly unfair. Yeah, I, I yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, yeah, the, 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 the World Series, I mean, other than the fact that the games have not been, you know, the, the best games, they've all, they've all pretty much been blowouts, the World Series is tight, and if, and if Washington wins the next game, it goes to a seventh game. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with a game you know, seven anytime. Yeah, that's 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 a, that's a good thing. But you, you know, Houston's pitching, their starting pitching staff is so dominant, and the Scherzer injury was just a, a, a killer for uh, uh, Washington. Yeah, I'm sure and, Washington knew about it, but to us fans, it came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what Strasburg does, you know, in the next game, and if he can get him to a game seven, you know, then you're talking about Granky and uh, um, whoever it is that. Uh, Washington will throw out there, and that that may end up being a pick'em game. You know, and, uh, although Granky's a phenomenal pitcher too. So that, yeah, that's hey, good. Mike, you know what I've been uh, thinking throughout this series is that. Clearly, uh, Houston has much more talent. In fact, they have much more talent than maybe any team in baseball by a lot. But it seems to me that this Washington team resembles the Cleveland Indians to me. The, the pitching that they're supposed to have, if you have Scherzer and Strasburg, and then you have a lineup made out of some cast-offs, including Jan Gomes and, and some other guys, no star power. It's almost like the Cleveland Indians of this past year. Similar to the, to the Indians of this past year, or uh, similar to the Indians 
of uh, 2016 as well, where, where they, they had a similar type uh, year, but actually made it all the way to the World Series, not so much on the strength of their starting pitching, but on the strength of their bullpen pitching. But either way, it was it was the, you know the couple of guys in the bullpen, and then a, a, a kind of a, a cast of young players and and some some no name guys that yeah. just kind of you know got, got them over the hump. But well, yes, was, I, I I agree. Yeah, That's when they put a, a very good very good analogy, and I think a lot of teams are like that nowadays. Well, I think Tito uh, Francona changed. I think so for, I think Francona changed the game with that, and Andrew Miller changed it. The only problem is. If you think it's almost like these bullpen games, uh, it's fine to put in a, a pitcher in the sixth inning if you think that's an important closing part of the game, but not everybody had Andrew Miller. No, yeah, Andrew Miller was a different sort of pitcher. He was the lefty, you could get lefties out, but then he also had that slider that went to the back foot of righties and you can get righties out. So right. he, he also was a guy that was a starter early in his career, so he was a two or three inning kind of pitcher. He, he didn't just need to come in there for an inning or an out like, you know, like a Paul Ossenmacher was back in the day. Right. You know, he was the kind of guy that could come in there for, for, for two plus innings and get you not only the sixth inning, but get you all the way to the eighth or the ninth inning so you can go to your closer. All so right, it was let, a little let, different situation with that. Yeah, let's turn our attention to the Browns. What, what gut-wrenching oh. thoughts were you, was going through you going through you uh, uh, watching that game? I was, I was, sick. I was <sighs> sick to my stomach, to be honest with you. I don't even know how to describe it, Les. Um, I, I came into this season with very high hopes for the Browns. I read, I read an article today that said that this is the worst coached job of a talented team that they've seen in the NFL in, in a long time. And, and it's, they have so much talent, top to bottom, to, to, to be losing games the way that they're losing. I mean, they, they could easily be... Uh, easily have beat the Patriots uh, uh, yesterday if they were disciplined and didn't turn the ball over, and and because uh, um, the, the defense played very well, and and if the two games against the Rams and the, and the Seahawks were, could have gone either way, you know, yeah. had, had, had they had been uh, coached better. You know, and, I'm watching them, Mike. I'm watching them in the game, and I'm saying they're so badly being outplayed, but they're still in the game they, until it became yeah. 17 at the end. And I'm also thinking that this is the game with Belichick winning his 300th puts him up with Shula and with Hallis, which is unbelievable, um, that, he, that he won his 300th game, and he basically didn't have to do a thing. The game took care of itself. The turnovers and, and the easy touch, they handed him touchdowns. Uh, Bill Belichick won that game, but he, and he certainly would have out, outcoached uh, uh, Freddie if he needed to, but he didn't have to do a thing. No, and other than a couple of drives by New England, they, they really didn't have to do anything during the course of that game. Um, he didn't necessarily outcoach Freddie. I think Freddie outcoached himself. Yeah, no I mean, question I, about that. The, 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 the mistakes that, that, that he's making, and, and, you know, again, I know he's a rookie head coach. The, in my opinion, and, and I'm a baseball guy, but co coaching football, particularly in the NFL, is probably the most difficult coaching job as a head coach in all sports. There's so I much mean, going on. I, I couldn't imagine being a head coach in the NFL. It's crazy. Yeah, um, it's, there's so much going on, Mike. It's almost like hosting more sports and less Levine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, uh, uh, wow. What it's did you say? What did you say? It. No, but it's, it's, it's so difficult to do that. So I, in, in some respects, I, I, I feel for him because he's a rookie head coach and he's trying to find his way. He's got this yeah. immensely talented team. And, and, and he's not a veteran guy that knows how to put all the pieces together. But then you watch them play and the, the senseless penalties, the, the, the undisciplined ways they're going about, the, the play calling. You know, he, he, goes, he goes to 12 for 12 at one point, throwing short passes down the field, that he completely gets away from that. He's got a, a back like, like Nick Chubb. Who's, who's a workhorse, who's doing a phenomenal job, and he doesn't hand the ball off to him an entire half of the game, and how, the game is pretty close. How about, I mean, how, just, about a, how about a shovel pass in a torrential rainstorm? <laughs> shovel pass? Right you the, you the, rarely the, see the shovel pass. The, the you, see, <laughs> you rarely see a shovel pass that works when it's sunny in 88. Yeah, and, and, and the thing with these guys is that they have so much talent, but they yeah. don't need to do these kind of trick plays. They, they show 
know that they can take the ball up and down the field, you know, running the ball and, 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 and working a, a short passing game with the dump off, that you're going to cover them downfield. Okay, and take, and take, take what you got and, and take it downfield and get your point. Okay, take a minute here for you. You make the call on who you want to talk about. The Cavaliers with an impressive win on opening night at home or the Ohio State with another uh, huge win over a pretty good opponent. Go ahead, comment on either or or both. Well, I'm, I'm going to comment on the Cavs, and I'm going to tell you that the both games, they they have played very hard, and it's it's enjoyable to watch them. I don't think they're going to be good, but they got that big win, you know, against a, a, a fairly decent team, um, and they and they they outplayed them the entire game, and the the effort that these guys have given the first two games of the season really it, it, it makes me want to watch them. It makes me want to root yeah. for them. They're yeah. young. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to lose a lot of games. We all know that. That's that's fine. But the effort that they're giving, the fact that they are not giving up a twenty point lead, and they're 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 continuing to work hard, and they're continuing to go after rebounds and play defense. I mean, this this coach Beeline, he, he's he's got he's got them focused on the defensive side and and the rebounding side. And if they do that, hopefully they can continue to keep games close, yeah. and, uh, and, and you know maybe they'll win a few more games than we think they're, they're Yeah, he's going he's going to find he's going to find out what a tough stretch eighty two game seasons are. But uh, yeah. ho- hopefully yeah. he can do it. All right, Mike. Wow, it's Nature Stone as always. Thanks for joining us. Hey, you got it, Les. I, I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Okay, Mike Masetta, Nature Stone, 216-575-0403. Portions of of uh, that particular segment brought to you by Tri C and uh, ranks 10th in the nation in conferring associate degrees in health professions and related scientists. Go to trisc.edu, health careers, for more information. We'll take a break. We'll come on back. We're halfway through. More Sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on cleveland.com. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family cool this summer, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at 440-449-HEAT. Welcome back. More sports and Les Levine seen exclusively on Cleveland.com. For those who don't know, if you're just uh, finding out about us, we do this show live from 6 until 7 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we do that uh, Monday through Thursday. Then Dave Bacon has uh, his show, uh, More Sports and Les Levine, uh, with the weekend winners. That's on Friday nights, again, from 6 until 7 p.m. But you can archive us any time of the day or night. And uh, we've got ways that you can reach us during the day and night, which we'll get to a little bit later. Uh, our email address, and you see you've got a whole bunch of emails tonight, uh, reallesslevine at gmail.com. All right, uh, Ohio State is the big news now. Ohio State uh, certainly looks like... If they run the table, obviously they uh, will be the number one team, although there's a big game coming up with LSU and Alabama, and we'll see what happens there. Of course, uh, as you know, uh, that uh, uh, Oklahoma got beat over the weekend. Let's take a look at what's coming up. 
for Ohio State. They have a bye this week, and then they've got Maryland and Rutgers, which should be an easy way to go. But then you've got uh, Penn State coming up. But Penn State, let's see what they're doing. That game will be November 23rd, and you see it right there, 38.5 points per game, 422 yards per game. They only allow 9.6 points a game. Yards uh, allowed uh, on passing, 211. Rushing yards allowed 68, and yards allowed per game 280. Key players that you have to watch out for for Penn State once the two teams get together. Sean Clifford is uh, the, the number one guy, the quarterback, and he's uh, completed 134 passes and 216 attempts. That's good for 62%. And uh, 1,931 yards, 20 touchdowns, and only three interceptions. His key man uh, wide receiver is uh, K.J. Hamler, who's already caught 37 balls. 620 yards and 16.8 on the average and eight touch scoring touchdowns. It's only uh, eight more than uh, o uh, seven more than Odell Beckham has. That's not bad. Um, so it's not a cakewalk. Ohio State still has to get by Penn State and Michigan and then uh, whether it's Minnesota or somebody else in the Big Ten championship game at Indianapolis. So uh, we'll, we'll uh, wait and see. Of course, I just mentioned Michigan. They had a big win over the weekend against Notre Dame. They are scoring 31 points a game, and uh, total yards per game almost 400, 397. They uh, allow 18.4 points a game, 160 yards uh, passing a, uh, per game, and rushing yards 110. And uh, yards uh, allowed total per game is 270. The thing about that is, you know, if you're if you're getting ready to play Ohio State, I have no idea where you begin to stop them uh, in, to stop them, whether it's on offense or defense, whether it's passing or rushing. Ohio State's loaded everywhere they go. But uh, the key player, of course, the quarterback is Shea Patterson, and he's completed 57% of his passes, 122 out of 214, good for 1,622 yards, 11 touchdowns and only four interceptions. Zach Charbonnet uh, is uh, the running back, uh, attempted 109 times, 531 carries, good for just under five yards per carry, and nine touchdowns on the ground. So it's going to be interesting. Um, it's it's not going to be a cakewalk, as I said, and and uh, Michigan came up with that with I, I consider a uh, a big win over Nader, Notre Dame, and who knows if there's any turmoil going on with the rumors about Harbaugh, uh, Jim Harbaugh maybe going to the pros. Uh, Harbaugh sent out a letter to the recruits, to the families of the recruits, saying there's nothing to it. But I in cases like this, I, I always consider that where there's smoke, there's fire. There's fire. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call if you'd like to get in. You can do that. Right now, so we've got uh, Northeast Factory Direct with three great locations, east, west, and of course to the south. That's the new one in Macedonia or northeastfactorydirect.com. Uh, do that, uh, check that out before you even go for cabinets or hot tubs or anything else. You name it, they've got it. Alex, now in, uh, in business 20 years, started with a garage sale with one piece of uh, furniture that he sold. It was a uh, dining room set, I believe. And uh, the rest is history. One of the great success stories and one of the great companies in Northeast Ohio. West 140th Street, that's in Cleveland, Lakeland Boulevard in Euclid, and of course Macedonia Drive in Macedonia, as well as NortheastFactoryDirect.com. We'll take a break. We'll come back in a moment. We want to tell you about Sokolowski's University Inn. They had their big uh, clam bake the last one of the year. They had it every Saturday in uh, October. What a success. Uh, well, they're, everything they touch is a, a success. Best location uh, coming out of Tremont. Uh, if you look at that, the uh, restaurant there in the back, you've got the best view of downtown Cleveland anywhere in the city. And of course, uh, Mike and Bernie's uh, grandparents started it all back in 1923. They are Cleveland's oldest family owned and operated restaurant and the winner of the James Beard Foundation Award. Only five restaurants in the country get it each and every year about four years ago. Sokolowski's the proud winner of that. And to my knowledge, the only restaurant in Cleveland that has ever won the uh, James Beard Foundation Award. We'll come on back in a moment. Uh, we'll get to your calls, 216-575-0403. More sports and less Levine. Seen exclusively on cleveland.com. No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. I had an epoxy-based sand paint on my floor that deteriorated, and that's why I called Nature Stone. Why paint? It's expensive, it's ugly, and it doesn't last. Nature Stone is always affordable. It's beautiful, and with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your garage floor again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of October and save up to half off. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone.
When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Presque Downs and Casino now has sports betting. Use one of the 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet. Then watch your favorite games on our new HD televisions or visit our new sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Time for a hot time quickie. How come it's possible to make an appearance on radio? Anybody have an answer to that? Speaking of that, I'll be on 92.3 The Fan uh, Friday morning and afternoon, Friday from 10 until 2. That's, of course, 92.3 The Fan. We'll get to Matt and Aurora in a minute. Uh, this is from Tom uh, Randazzo. Uh, let's take a look at sports history first. Uh, oh, my goodness, 1995. The Braves win their first World Series since moving to Atlanta, shutting out the Indians 1-0, winning in six games. Tom Glavin and Mark Wallers, along with the home plate umpire, gave up just one hit. David Justice homered while he was still with the uh, Braves for the only run of the game. Six, six uh, game win for the Atlanta Braves in 1995. I, I always contended if the Indians won that, that 95 team, even if they didn't win again, would be considered one of the great baseball teams of all time. Tom Randazzo says, Hi, Les. John Dorsey has a huge mess on his hands. His hand-picked coach is a national joke and should have been fired last night. The draft picks sent for the highly overrated Beckham should have been used to bolster the offensive line that is now playing musical chairs seven games into the season. His stock has to be dropping like a rock with the Haslams. Great show. Thank you. Today. And, uh, yes, Baker played well last night, so he agrees with me. Let's go to Matt, who's in Aurora. Matt, good evening. Go ahead. Yes. Matt. Yeah, I appreciate the open lines. I didn't think internet shows had that. But. Well, we got it tonight. Okay. Uh, by the way, we've got uh, Bud Shaw tomorrow night, and uh, we're not sure how we're doing this, but Wednesday and Thursday we'll have, uh, we'll have the D-man, Dennis Maniloff, and uh, Hoynesy, Paul Hoyne. So we're not, I'll announce tomorrow when that will be. All right, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, the 300 win that um, Belichick got, I mean, there, there were two other coaches. Who was that, Staubach and... The, the coaches would have been uh, I mean, no, George, not, not George Hallis. And Landry, right? No, no, no. Uh, George Hallis and Don Shula. Wow. Yeah, okay. Pretty good company. Yeah. Hey, how about our, our franchise quarterback? Can we still tag him that? Or, 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 I, or I, I actually thought he played pretty well. I mean, he could have done more. It was a horrible conditions. I thought he looked like he was in control. He threw the ball very well last night, I thought. Um but you give up three. You have three uh, uh, problems there uh, with the turnovers and th three consecutive plays. Something it's got to be unheard of in the history of the football annals. I, I don't know how you recover from that. But yeah. I, but I said before, Belichick did, he won his 300th game. He didn't do anything to win it. It was handed to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm, I'm enjoying this World Series. Um. I'm so I'm just unhappy. There's no. It's drama in the eighth and ninth innings. You got seven to one, eight to one scores. Uh, hopefully, they'll straighten that out in the next one or two games. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Matt, great to talk to you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. Cleveland Bill writes. In the spring, I wrote predicting 9-7 and seven for the Browns, which is not well received. I expected the added talent would improve on the seven and eight and one. A record of 2018, but that's the team. Uh, it, it wouldn't gel quickly and would encounter such a usually bad Cleveland luck. When has anybody seen a falling offensive guard kick the ball out of a teammate's grasp? Yeah, Batonio did that. Can't, you can't plan for that. 
This team has experienced a horrible sophomore slump by its coach, its quarterback, and the whole offensive line, all performing worse than last year. I hope they'll still hit 9-7, and seven, but it's going to take quite a turnaround. So there you have it from Cleveland Bill. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. We'll do quickies in the next segment. Uh, but if you'd like to get in, uh, Matt's line just opened up. If you'd like to get in, and we'll uh, talk about lots to talk about. Ohio State, Cleveland Browns, the, uh, the World Series going on, and uh, anything else that's on your mind. It looks like the Dodgers are trying to put together a, uh, a package to try to get uh, Francisco Lindor. And uh, I've uh, re read a lot from the national columnists about Lindor, and they're not in unison as to what they would do if they were the Indians, if they were Chris Antonetti uh, or, uh, or Mike Chernoff. They're, they're, not, they're not in agreement as to what to do. There's three options with Lindor. Number one, if you think you can still beat Minnesota, who's going to lose much of their pitching due to free agency, if you think you can beat what's left of that, you just keep Lindor here and give it a run, give it a try, try to win it in 2020. Uh, or you can package him up right now and get, because you, there's more value, you've got control over him for two, hour, for, uh, two years. And uh, if you set yourself out there and say you're going to the highest bidder, uh, you'll see if that works. But if it doesn't, you'll uh, put yourself in a position where next year, 2021, where they'll still have the, the option on him, uh, then maybe you, you set up for a trade for him. But I think most people, most observers would say to get the most from some organization, you'd have to do it right now in this off season before you go to spring training. Every day that, that goes away takes away the option or the, uh, the hammer that the Indians have on that. Uh, at this moment, I would go with him one more year and take my chances uh, after that because I think that they can still win the division. And Chicago has improved, but they're not that good yet. Minnesota will not be improved, I wouldn't think, if they lose who I expect them to lose, although they, uh, they were terrific, especially in the, in the month of September this past year. But if I were the Indians, I'd, I'd give it one more year, then trade them after that. You know, there's, and you can't, I, every time I say this, I get accused of being an apologist for the Dolans, for Paul Dolan. You, you, you can't keep him. You can't pay $300 million for the guy. He might be one of the top five guys in all of baseball, but can you afford in this market to put out $300, 300 million dollars? I don't, I don't see how you can do that and uh, expect to put anybody else on the field. Um, you got the young young pitchers who want to get paid. Uh, not yet. You still have control of them at a small amount of money. But if you wait a couple of years, it, you you won't be able to find anybody. You'll have Francisco Lind Francisco Lindor, but you won't have anybody else in the in the lineup. So uh, it's just unfortunate, but, but that's the way it is. 216-575-0403 is the number. We uh, will come back in a moment. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. Catch the excitement of live harness racing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, post time 6 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, 6.40 p.m., and of course, all kinds of contests. Lady Lux uh, Clubhouse is open every Saturday with a buffet for just uh, $15.95, but they're open, uh, Northfield, of course, open every day early at about noon that's for simulcast action all over the world and the weekly sunday contest featuring belmont with the top prize five hundred dollars that's each and every week with free admission free parking every day at northfield park we'll come back one more time more sports and less levine seen exclusively on cleveland.com No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. There was moisture in the basement, it ruined the carpeting, the smell was terrible. We didn't feel safe in our own basement and that's when we called Nature Stone. And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of October and save up to half off. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor, wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. 
The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Let's take a look at this date in Les Levine sports history. October 28, 1995, after the Indians lost game, five, game uh, six of the World Series to Atlanta, Les decides that it's uh, not so heartbreaking to lose one of those things every 41 years or so. Softens the blow. 1954. I've told it a million times. I went to game, game four, 1954, as a little, little, little lad. And they lost the game, got swept, and I asked my father why everybody was crying. I said, well, they, uh, they, were, they lost the World Series. And I said, well, that's no big deal. They'll win it next year. Has that happened? We're still waiting for next year, I suppose. 216-575-0403. Let's go to uh, Bill, who's in North Olmsted. Bill, good evening. And you remember Hank Majewski hit the pinch hit home run, don't you? I, I do remember it. <laughs> have, you, did, have you heard me tell that story? Uh, yeah, we we I mean, yeah, we'll have I to mean, go back so I, far. I don't know that I don't know I, anything I, uh, from your your comments from your yeah your, I, your youth, but I I have a great one. Well, hold on one second. I uh, remember that ball going deep past the pillars. Remember in lower the lower deck of Cleveland Stadium. Oh sure, the I've pillars that kept there. up, and I I remember it going over those you know past those pillars, and then. 15, 20 years ago, I saw highlights of that World Series, and it just got over the outstretched glove of the left fielder. Right. Well, what I have goes back 50 years, and you can add it to your uh, Les Levine, uh, This Day in History. Yeah. A uh, good friend of mine who actually had called into your show at one point in time took a tour group to uh, Ireland, and he had lunch with a fellow and his wife that uh, was from Atlanta, and they had been together for about 40 years in Atlanta. And my buddy said uh, that he was from Cleveland, and the guy he was talking to from Atlanta said, well, I grew up in Cleveland. And he asked him where he went to high school, and he said, Collinwood. So he asked uh, the guy, well, did you know Bill Russell? And here it was, Bob Crane, my best friend from when I was a kid. And you talk about a small world. I haven't seen Bob or talked to him in over 50 years. It, it, it was Bob? Because I'll yep. tell you what, when I played yep. for... Um Sandlots for Lee. I played for Lesius Hiles, and we went to a national tournament in Detroit, and we were allowed to pick up or draft three players from uh, other teams in the city, and Bob Crane was one of them. Well, I know Steve Stone was on that team, but the reason I know it is Bob just sent me a picture of that team, and there you are, back row, standing next to the manager. Now, I don't know if you have a picture of that. I do, but so, yeah, I moved a couple of years ago, and now I can't find it. The mover is looking at it very nicely. Well, I'm going to get you a copy of this. Is my wife, uh, I don't know how to send these things. No, neither do I. That would, be, that would be so great if you can. Did Bob remember me by any chance? Oh, yeah. In fact, I had made the comment because I brought his name up, or somehow it came up yeah. probably 15 years ago. And you said you remembered him as one of the biggest uh, bench jockeys that you had yeah, ever seen. Yeah, I bet you he was proud of that. Yep, and he, he admitted it. He said, in fact, in his email to me just uh, today, he said, uh, thanks, uh, thank Les for being accurate about that because he always <laughs> thought it was an advantage. Of, uh, I might be accurate uh, about that, but I just thought of something. He was not one of the guys we drafted. He was on the team the whole time, so I apologize. My memory is not so good either. But he was, he was a yeah. great guy. We had, that team was made up of guys from Brush, uh, Collinwood, uh, Benedictine, um, West Tech. Uh, it, it was fun. It was uh, that that was great stuff. Well, it's always kind of fun to come across guys that you, and Bob and I were best of friends. I mean, from ages seven till we graduated from high school, I probably saw him every day. In fact, I was in his wedding, and uh, you know, to not have seen him in over fifty yeah. years. And yeah, that's great. To meet him or get caught up with him because right. a friend of mine went to Ireland and happened to sit uh, with him at lunch. Okay, what else do you have? Because we're getting we're running late here. What else going on? No, I just, uh, I, I don't even get into the Browns anymore. I, I didn't get into the hype when uh, they, they were hyping them in the beginning of the year, and I don't feel particularly terrible 
about what's going on now. I, I maybe like your guy Mike. Uh, I think I'm just pretty much a baseball guy now. I mean, I'll I'll follow them and hope they win, but I'm not going to be so upset. Uh, they'll probably fire Kitchens, and then we'll have more yeah, turmoil. Yeah, we'll do it again. Cleveland will be the joke of the, the sports world again, and that's the, all the negativity. I, I I just don't don't care for that. All right, Bill. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it very much. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. All right, uh, we'll close down the phone lines now, but we will go with the How Come Quickies for the night. See what you have to say. Gary in Univ University Heights says, Hi, Les, I enjoy your show. I've got two How Come Quickies. How come the Wicked Witch of the West never took a bath? I, I haven't wondered about that. I've wondered about uh, Tarzan, how he uh, always was clean-shaven. How is that possible? Anyway, he, his How Come Quickies, how come when my doctor gave me six months to live, I told him I couldn't pay my bill, so he gave me another six months? <laughs> nice. Mr. Gullible, how come cannibals don't eat clowns because they taste funny? How come, how come I bought, I can't grade them? We don't have a, a partner here to grade them tonight, so I hope you didn't waste them. How come I bought two goldfish and I named them one and two, so if one died, I would still have two? I'm putting that, when we write the book, we're putting that on the good side. And uh, John Patrick chips in. How come my anger management counselor says I have to quit watching the Browns? That is so self-explanatory. You don't even have to, to worry about it. All right, tomorrow night, Bud, the great Bud Shaw from uh, WKYC.com will join us. And uh, Wednesday, and combination of Wednesday and Thursday, we don't know how we're breaking it down yet, but the D-man, Dennis Maniloff, on one of the nights, and uh, Paul Hoynes, Hoynesy. And by the way, he'll be here the other night. If you can, if you get a chance, you got a few minutes to go here. Uh, you got nothing doing, you're on the computer. Go archive us for last Thursday's show with Hoynesy, and check out the last five minutes of it with his rant of the, of the day, of the week at the time. And it might have been in his top five rants of all time. If you're a Paul Hoynes fan, you got to check that out. You can archive it on cleveland.com. One of the top five rants by Paul Hoynes, and you know how good they are, and we're looking forward to another one this week. Well, that'll do it for us. Thanks to all of you for joining us tonight. Uh, Doug Lee Maurice uh, will be, well, we'll find another date for him. Unfortunately, we had some misconnections on that, and uh, he does a terrific job for cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer. I'll see you tomorrow night. Don't forget, I'll be on uh, radio uh, from 10 until 2 on uh, Friday morning on 92.3 The Fan. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent. <laughs>